Hi, good morning, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 850. What a nice round number that is. <laughs> I'm Kristen Omdahl, and we're here live in Southwest Florida at the beach. And uh, this is the beautiful and relaxing and calm Gulf of Mexico behind me if you are joining me live. Wow, I'm trying to crochet and talk at the same time, and that's not working very well. I just made a very simple mistake. Whoopsie. <laughs> anyway, if you're joining me live, please say hello. Let me know if you're crafting this morning. Let me know what you worked on this weekend. I hope you had a nice and relaxing long weekend or normal weekend, whatever. <laughs> Hi, Lisa and Joe and Edna. Carrie, good morning, Grace and Steffi. Good morning. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hi, Pamela and Thea. Good morning. Hi, Debbie and Carrie. Hi, Tricia. Good morning. Hi, Kimberly. Good morning. Welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. Hi, Yana and Kathy. Lisa, you finished your Blake Sampler afghan. That's wonderful. Hi, Barbara and Donna. I hope you enjoyed making it. Hi, Melanie. Joe's working on the knit throw. I believe that's called the Sydney. Or Sydney. That's wonderful. Hi, Lori and Mariana. And thank you, Tricia. Yes, Marlon had a great birthday. Marlon turned 19 on Sunday. Uh, I uh, made a picnic for him and his friends at the beach on Saturday. And then one of his friend's dad is a fishing charter boat captain. And he took Marlon out fishing yesterday in the Gulf. They went 10 miles offshore and Marlon caught tons of fish, including a giant barracuda. Uh, he shared it on his Instagram, I believe last night. I shared his post to my stories and Instagram this morning. I'll have to get his permission and see if I can uh, share those photos anywhere else. If I can get his permission, I'll share the photo in a post here on YouTube as well. He looks great. He looks so happy and excited and the fish is enormous and dangerous. So all the more exciting for him. Uh, Linda's working on the Nora bowl. That's awesome. That's from 80 handmade gifts. Uh, Sherry just finished the mesh berry pullover. Wow. Yes, Marlon had a great time fishing and he's, he, you know, he loves to fish. And unfortunately what his friend's dad was able to do for him is something that's usually just a little too expensive for me to be able to take him to do as often as I would like. So I was actually really grateful that his friend gifted him that for his birthday. So I was happy as well because it's, if I had to pay for it, it would be really expensive. So really a wonderful, wonderful birthday surprise. Hi, Tr uh, Trish is working on the Mandy top. Wonderful. Yes, it was a wonderful experience. Um, Christine's working on what I'm make, wearing today. That's great. What else? Oh, so if you saw my sunset video the other day, you saw that I had to unravel uh, that pineapple top I was working on. It just wasn't working out. And I figured if as long as I've got to uh, unravel, I may as well go to the beach and watch the sunset and do it and share it with all of you. I feel like a lot of times people really enjoy seeing me uh, fix mistakes. Uh, I feel like it really a lot, I don't think I can give enough reminders as a yarn professional to remind enthusiasts and hobbyists that it is okay to make mistakes. And so every opportunity, since I've realized how much people appreciate it, I'm trying to show my mistakes more often because gosh, I make mistakes just as much as anybody else. I'm human and I make mistakes. And so anytime I feel like it can make someone else feel better about their own mistakes, I am more than happy to share mine. So I unraveled that whole top. I This ball, you may have noticed that this ball is smaller than the ball I first unraveled. And that's because I have already begun another project in the yarn. <laughs> I'm thinking about making like an oversized vest you know, kind of like a Ruana oversized vest look. Um, and so I'm starting from the shoulders and working down. I'm debating working left uh, from the center out in both sides. So we'll have to see what it ends up looking like when it gets a little bit bigger. Um, but it'll either be from the center worked out in both directions or it'll be top down, I haven't decided. But you can see it is a beautiful stitch pattern. Uh, it would be, it's same stitch pattern I used in the birch vest. It's one of my favorite stitch patterns. And it's a stitch pattern I'm 
I, I, I modified for the Maybelline crochet on fabric top, which I am now making a tutorial video for, and that should be released later this week. Speaking of videos, thanks Judy for posting a link to the Create Zen and Frogging on the Beach <laughs> video uh, that I did this week. If you didn't get a chance to see it, the sunset was gorgeous and I'm just unraveling and it's a little sad actually. I was feeling sorry for myself. It was Marlon's birthday and um, you know, he doesn't spend that much time with me anymore. So it's a little bittersweet uh, thinking about, you know, thinking about the 19 years and everything i don't know i don't know if anyone else gets emotional on your older children's birthdays but it's a little emotional for me anyway uh also speaking of videos the athena crochet shrug video series starts today so it's a four-part video series part one begins today right after the podcast ends and will be live premiering each of the four videos after the podcast every day this week so it'll be at 9 30 podcast is at 9 a.m my local time uh eastern time and so we go for roughly 30 minutes so i have each of the live premieres scheduled for 9 30. you can go to my youtube channel and set reminders for them if you are already subscribed to my channel uh, you may get notifications or you may need to subscribe and click the bell button to get so you get notifications or you may need to do that and check your settings on your YouTube app on whatever device you're using. Sometimes YouTube needs you to say that you want notifications for it as well. Anyway, if you have any questions about any of that, please let me know. Otherwise, Judy's posting a link to the video right now. You can click on that link in the live chat and it will take you to the... Um, it'll take you to that video and as soon as it uh, begins at 9 30 there'll be a live chat there and I'll be able to chat with you there so that if you get any have any questions you can actually ask me live during the premiere once the premiere is over the video becomes a recorded video on YouTube so you can watch it anytime you want play pause whatever you need and anytime you leave a comment in the recorded video uh, comments I also get notified from those so I can answer your questions or guide you to where you need to go. Having said that though, in the video description of all my videos, I have links for everything that uh, I talk about in the videos, including the Athena Shrug is made. Oh, what is that? Oh, he's almost, it's one of those big horse flies. He's right in front of the camera too. I'm surprised you can't see him. He's giant. He's like that big. Oh, they bite bad too. I hope I don't get bit. Ugh. Speaking of which, I've had lots of creepy crawlies making me scream this weekend. I had a giant snake almost step on my foot in a driveway yesterday. I screamed so loud. Uh, the snake was about three feet. Oh, you could hear the bug too? <laughs> uh, the snake was about three feet, about this round. He was solid black, so he was probably just a garter snake. But I was walking to my car and he crawled from under my car across my feet, like not on my feet, but like four to six inches away from my feet in flip flops. So my feet exposed and slithered under the house of where I was at. And I was like, I was so scared to walk to my car. I thought for sure there were gonna be monsters just attacking me from under the car. Then I was afraid to get in the car thinking there must be some inside the car now too. I scream bloody murder, obviously. Oh! <laughs> You know, I get on high, once I scream about some creepy call it crawly, I'm kind of on high alert and screamy for a while. So I think the snake is going to make me scream about the bug a little more than normal even this morning. So I am sorry if I'm scaring anybody, uh, but this horse fly is huge. And I remember being a kid and getting, getting those giant painful welts from horse flies and I don't want one today. So <laughs> anywho, where were we? Uh, we were talking about videos. The Athena, uh, the Athena crochet shrug that the video series starts today is made in Biso Sporty yarn. The pattern comes in multiple sizes. You can find Biso Sporty yarn, and you can see the uh, pattern on my website. And all the links are in the video description. Judy's been posting some live links here as well, so thank you for that. Today I am wearing the Chantilly lace uh, cardi vest. I think I'll wear the Athena Shrug tomorrow, but I wanted to wear this one today because I did a little video for uh, reminding people 
before the show started this morning. I did a little video this morning reminding people that there's still time to enter to win the yarn giveaway for a ball of Be So Fine yarn. And that's what the Chantilly Lace Vest is made out of. You can find this pattern on my website. If you would like to enter to win a free ball of Be So Fine yarn, my number one fingering weight, 100% bamboo yarn that's 650 yards per ball. If you would like to enter to win a ball of Be So Fine yarn, all you have to do is leave a comment on Create, Share, Inspire podcast episode 848 from last week. If you leave a comment there, you will be entered to win the ball of yarn this Thursday, live during the podcast, whatever episode that may be. It might be 852, I guess. Um, I will be choosing a random, uh, I'll be using a random generator thing on, you know, gadget thingy on the internet. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, where I, <laughs> I can randomly choose a comment, uh, and I'll randomly choose a comment, and whoever made that particular comment will be the winner. So all you have to do is leave any comment, it doesn't matter what you say, uh, preferably something nice versus not nice. <laughs> but if you leave a comment on episode 848, you can enter to win a ball of Be So Fine yarn. Does anybody have any questions about that or anything I've talked about so far today? I think my leg fell asleep. <sighs> yes, and only one comment per person because that comment enters you to win, so we only want one entry per person. And thank you for playing. It's fun. And then Thursday afternoon, when I get back to my studio, I will reply to every single person that enters a comment and enters to win. So whether you win or lose, you will get a reply letting you know whether you won or lost. And also you'll, you can find that information in the video description and in a pinned comment on that video. That's 800 episode 848 on create share inspire podcast does that make sense to everybody do you want more information do you have any questions they want to make sure everybody understands perfectly yes judy that's another uh good uh comment it is open to everyone worldwide in fact last week our winner was from australia and her yarn or her uh, her yarn has already gone out she won our contest last week of the um she won the comment last week of 10 balls of be so baby yarn what color am i giving away i have not decided last week for the giveaway i gave away 10 balls of be so baby yarn in color emerald green and i have not decided what color i'm giving away this week of be so fine yarn all right, any more questions? Believe I'm gonna have a surprise for you possibly tomorrow. What else? Uh, hi, OMG Granny Square, nice of you to join us. Hi G, good morning. Wait and see if anyone has any other questions. Emerald green is very gorgeous. It sure is. I've been wanting to make myself something in emerald green or make a new pattern in emerald green and be so baby yarn. It is such a beautiful color. Oh gosh, the water's so pretty behind us today. Look at all those different colors of blue. Hi, Sherry from Kokomo. Would anybody like to go walk up to the water's edge? It looks like it is very clear this morning. In fact, I'm not even gonna wait. I know at least one person's gonna say yes to that, right? Okay. looks like there's i feel like one of these days we need to come down here and take some uh and pick up some seashells and use them in a craft project uh, 
how long have I been saying that? Years. But recently, remember when I cleaned out the garage recently? Do you know what I found in the garage? I found that manual drill that I had bought specifically for drilling holes in seashells to make them usable for beading. And uh, I found it and it's handy now, so it's a good time. The water is warm. This is the first week that I've felt like the water was warm enough to get in. And this weekend, I actually got in the water for the first time this year. I went all the way up to my shoulders and got cooled off while I was at the beach. And it was lovely. Can you see how clear that is? Just amazing, right? Crystal clear this morning. Man, I'd love to walk all the way out there. Here's the view to the north of us and the view to the south of us. Can't see much over the driftwood. There, you can see a little bit more there. The water sounds so relaxing too. Look at how pretty, I don't know if that's moss, algae, I don't know, I guess it's moss. Look at how pretty it flows in the water. Sometimes I just get mesmerized by watching that bright green is it moss? Wouldn't you say that's moss? See how the one, see the bit of it that's in the water? I get mesmerized watching it flow in the water, kind of like hair when a hair's underwater. I find that to be just so mesmerizing. Maybe it's the color too. Yeah, the driftwood does add a lot of extra beauty here. It really does. Oh, having said that though, I've got an idea and I'm gonna run it past you guys. And it's not that I don't absolutely love this place and I know you love it too, but I, and this is crazy, I've been in this part of Florida for what, 14 years now? I discovered, and what, I discovered Wiggins Pass, what, two months ago? <laughs> I discovered a handful of other hidden gem beaches just down the road, a little south of here this weekend. Only one of which I've been to, but the other two or three are in the same stretch of road. And I was wondering what you guys thought about going on, you know, going on a little walkabout, maybe uh, a, a one day each week or one here and there, trying out some of the other beaches in the area. Would you guys like to do that with me? I know, isn't it crazy, Sanchal? I have so many amazing beaches here. Now, is anything gonna look like this with the driftwood? No. I think this is pretty unique right here, and it's not that I don't wanna come here often still, and it's definitely convenient for me because it's so close to home, but if you guys are up for it, I think it'd be fun to explore some of the other beaches as well. Um, and I've been able to get, I've been getting up earlier than normal recently, so I feel like it wouldn't be too difficult for me to tack on a little longer drive. Um, was I scared of Jaws? Yeah, of course, I'm always scared of Jaws <laughs> when I go in the water. Wow, I see a lot of yeses. Okay, good. I wanted to run it by you guys first, and like I said, it doesn't mean that we're not gonna come here anymore because this is special and convenient, but, um, I thought it would be fun to check out some other ones and I have some fun silly and promo video ideas with some new things that I want to talk I, I'm look I'm not going to tell you why but I'm looking for, for to do a special video where I can find you know the showers where you can rinse off after you've been in the water I need to find a beach that has those showers within view of the water that's what we're looking for and I can't tell you why <laughs> Not yet, but you will, if I find one, you will absolutely find out very soon. But that's what I'm looking for, to do a special video. <laughs> and so I thought that if you want to come along with me while I search for it, um, we can do it together. And then I, I would imagine that when that video comes out where I use a shower that you can see the water from, it'll be that much more special because you know that I worked behind the scenes to find it. <laughs> All right, well good, then we will, I'll start figuring out when and where, when, where, and how to add those extra um, locations to the podcast. Ah, there's a side combo going on about other beaches in other parts of the world. Yes, there are so many wonderful places in the world, so many nature-filled places. Flash dance, 
Uh, no, I'm not going to. Although that would be really fun, Jody. <laughs> no, I don't plan on doing the flash dance. Um, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Hi, Jody. Oh, good. As long as I have your curiosity up, then I feel like I've done my job for the day. <laughs> All right, we're done. <laughs> uh, Sandshell will be in Florida water next week. Well, it should be good for you. It's been warm enough down here that the water has definitely heated up. And it's, I feel like it's very comfortable to get in the water right now. But if you're from up north, you might have felt like that even weeks ago. <laughs> good. Lisa's curiosity is up too. Wonderful. All right, is anybody excited to make the Athena crochet shrug? The video series starts today in about nine minutes. And so that pad, I'm wearing the Chantilly lace crochet wrap today. Yes, I am. Um, I'll wear the Athena shrug tomorrow. I just wanted to wear this one today to remind everybody that there's still time to enter to win a ball of Be So Fine yarn, which is what this is made with. Uh, you can enter to win one ball of Be So Fine yarn on Create, Share, Inspire podcast number 848, which you can find here on my YouTube channel from last week. And if you just leave a comment, one comment per person, you'll be entered to win the ball of Be So Fine yarn. And it open, it's open to anybody worldwide. Uh, then the like I said the Athena shrug starts today. So this is a project that starts at the cuffs You make you start at the cuff then you work increases in pattern through the arm Then you work even in pattern to the center back Then you repeat that for the second side and then you join them together in the center back and then Once you sew up the side seams of uh, the sleeve seams then you work the collar around the opening in the center. It is an easy construction. It is an easy stitch pattern. And if you've never done an increase in pattern before, I share tons of, uh, I share, share tons of charts, written instructions for multiple sizes, and you can find this, the tutorial videos to supplement the pattern and charts. So for whoever asked if it's an easy pattern, I think with all of those items together that I think anybody could uh, could make it. Do I do any knit alongs? I do do crochet alongs and knit alongs sometimes. I haven't done one in a while, but it is probably a good time to do one soon. Uh, yes, we've done knit alongs and crochet alongs, and I feel like people have enjoyed them. Uh, anybody who has participated in mine, let the other person know if you enjoyed it or not. Um, Linda, is there a formula to armholes on rectangular shawls with foundation ovals? Uh, well, whether you use chains or foundation ovals, you really just have to pay attention to how much of the stitch pattern you're skipping for the armhole. So like, for example, this pattern happened to be a multiple of three foundation ovals per pattern repeat. So for e I skipped one, two, three. So I skipped four pattern repeats. So four times three would be 12 foundation ovals for this particular one, it looks like. But you'll have to study the stitch pattern and, st and figure out how much of the stitch pattern you want to skip for that armhole opening. And then from there decide um, whether doing a chain or a foundation oval makes more sense. Depending on the stitch pattern, if you can't understand how to convert it to foundation ovals, that's fine, just do a chain. Uh, I believe on the Priscilla Circle Vest, I just did a chain. I just figured out how much of the stitch pattern I was skipping and did it the chain to represent all of the chains and stitches that I was missing. So like, for example, let's say it's three stitches, two chains, three stitches, two chains. Well, if you're skipping all that, you're skipping three stitches, two chains, right? Three and two, five, three stitches, two chains, five, you're skipping, then that would be 10. Um, you want, just want, you want to skip one for one. So you figure out how many stitches and how many chains you're skipping, and you would add uh, chains for all of that, representing a chain for each stitch and a chain for each chain. Does that make sense? That would be the simplest way I can describe the formula for how to add an armhole opening. So if you skip the skipping, it makes a shawl. Yes, if you skip the skipping, it would just be a rectangular wrap. Yep, there is nothing else done here. All we do is uh, we're creating 
glorified buttonholes, right? They're large buttonholes. How do you make a buttonhole? You do a chain and skip whatever section you're skipping and then go on and pattern. Well, the same is the case with these, this particular type of armhole opening. You're just skipping. It looks, okay, it looks bigger than that here, right? It, because it's a little stretched out. But if you, maybe that makes more sense. See what the armhole actually is? Cannot find place on 848 to leave a comment. Well, you'll have to scroll down. Perhaps you're on a phone. I don't know what kind of device you're on, but there's also, I mean, depending on what type of device you're on, YouTube is standard on all videos. You have to scroll down to comment or you have to click um, an arrow. If any, if you can share what device you're on, maybe someone else can tell you how they do it on that device. Um, if you go to a laptop, it's much easier to find the comments because you have a larger screen, but it is definitely available. If you need help, just let someone know. Um, thank you, Kimberly. This is uh, one of my bodysuits from my Amazon shop. In fact, my shorts are from there too. Yeah, there's a place to comment underneath all videos on YouTube. I'm wearing the cutoff jean shorts in the lightest denim color, and I'm wearing, you know, I've bought them in several colors now. And I'm wearing the bodysuit that I have in black and white. I have it in pink also. It's like a bubblegum pink. Fun. I love bodysuits. Great questions, everybody. And uh, the person who wasn't sure how to leave a comment, if you still can't figure it out, you can email Judy after the show, J-U-D-I at KristenAmdahl.com. But it's always underneath the videos. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Debbie. Thanks, Judy, for posting links. Judy just posted a link to the pink bodysuit. Great questions, everybody. Are there any more questions today? My earrings are from my Amazon shop, too. Yeah, I used to wear bodysuits a long time ago, too, Sanchelle, and they've made a resurgence this year, and I fully support it. I think bodysuits are a great underlayer for smoothing out sides as well as uh, staying tucked in. I think these are really comfortable. They're like really stretchy t-shirt material. Being tall and long torsoed back in the 70s, I thought bodysuits and one-piece bathing suits were extremely painful. And I don't know, I guess fabrics are more stretchy nowadays. That <laughs> These are so much more comfortable than bodysuits ever used to be. I absolutely love them. The new and improved bodysuits are definitely a winner to me. <laughs> I do feel like they make you look slimmer because they kind of smooth things out and you stay tucked in. Um, I don't often wear them by themselves. I usually wear them as a layering piece with something over the top, but I think that as an underlayer being smoothly tucked in is a really great look for an underlayer. All right, does anybody have any other questions? I appreciate all the questions today. Yes, Debbie, the earring set is so fun. There's so many choices from all of the fake stone looking ones to the rattan ones and the metal ones, and they're light as a feather. So to have big graphic earrings that are also super light so they don't pull down your pierced ear holes, I just, I love them so much. All right, um, oh, did we make, we made it all the way through this book, so we needed to go to another book. Hmm, well, I'll tell you what, let's just randomly pick one today and I'll try to remember to bring the next issue tomorrow for another quote. Um, always a good one. Florence Nightingale, I attribute my success to this. I never gave or took any excuses. Absolutely, yes. No excuses, you do or you don't do, right? Oh, that's a Yoda one. Do or don't do, there is no try. Yeah, you just never give up. You stay focused and you don't give up. And I don't care what the goal is, if it's to be a nicer person, to cook better, to knit or crochet better, to lose weight, to learn something, to go to school, whatever. There's no excuses. Do or don't do. There is no try. Um, and that just boils down to not giving up. Keep your focus and just don't give up. No matter how many times you fail, you just don't give up. I love it. So wonderful. Thank you, Florence Nightingale. I attribute my success to this. I never gave or took any excuses. Uh, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed the sunrise, the beach, 
Oh, the colors, the sounds, chatting with me and everyone else. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I'll see you in 30 seconds for the live premiere of Athena Crochet Shrug video part one. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next episode of Create, Share, Inspire podcast. Bye-bye.